let's go ahead and find a standing position. Just pause for a moment, just um, and kind of shake it off. Releasing those arms, those legs. And then go ahead and just land, let yourself land wherever feels comfortable. Maybe close the eyes for a moment here. And without changing anything, notice how you've landed. So the moment you start to notice you're going to want to change, pause, try not to do that. Try to notice where you land. Where do you like to stand? So does the weight fall a little more to one side or the other? Is it more forward or back? How do your arms land? So are they ahead of your body, right next to the body? Are the arms turned in or neutral or out? Where does your head land? We all have different patterns and habits. I'm just noticing what your kind of standing pattern or habit is. Where do you like to be? Where is your rib cage in relationship to your pelvis and your head? Where is your pelvis? How is it tilted? What is your normal? And there's nothing wrong with your normal, even if it's maybe patterns that can cause discomfort or pain or reduce limitation or reduce range of motion. But noticing the patterns is important. And then begin to start to move out of your pattern in a way that you can Start with the feet and see if you can maybe shift your weight so the weight is even on your feet or as even as you can sense. Sometimes it's hard to sense if we've always been in one way, thinking one way is middle. Now see if you can sense that both heels are grounding down equally, both balls of the feet are grounding down equally. Your toes are tracking straight forward, knees are tracking forward. You're finding your neutral pelvis without straining too much. So you're sensing that your pubic bone and your two frontal hip bones, those ASIS bones, are in the same plane. So the pubic bone isn't thrust forward, nor is it hiding back behind you. They're in that neutral position. Your rib cage is soft, so it's not popping out, nor is it dropped down and drooping. The rib, is, the rib cage is stacked directly over the pelvis. The shoulders are not pulled down, but nor are they floating up towards the ears. They're soft. The arms dangle naturally. The back of the neck is long, but it's not strained. And the ears, if you dropped a line down from the ears, they'd be right above the shoulders. So sensing at that point, now that we've reached the top of the head, has your body shifted back to whatever your pattern is in the lower half of the body? Just notice. If it's so strong, our desire to be in a certain position. Let's see if you can come back to that symmetry, that evenness, right to left, front to back. And take a few deep breaths. and then go ahead and open up the eyes. Now let's take the feet nice and wide. So taking your legs wide, so wider than the shoulders, feet are parallel. And we're gonna do some hip movement here. So you might as well take your hands to your pelvis, so the bones, so not so much the waist, you're down at the bones of the pelvis. And we're gonna let our hips kind of tick tock right to left. So it's like you're hiking one hip up. So here I'm hiking my left hip up, the left side of the body shortens. We feel a lengthening in that right inner thigh. That left hip is lifted up. And then back to center and then other side. And go ahead and just go back and forth here and notice is one side easier than the other? 
Notice if your torso is making any movements. So here, right, my torso is staying still and moving just the pelvis and the waist. Sometimes what we'll, we'll see is a little bit of this sort of shifting your whole body or even kind of a rib shift. So see if you can keep those ribs really still and you're moving just the pelvis and those legs in relationship to the pelvis. Are the legs staying straight? And just notice how this feels. Notice if there's any rotation. So sometimes there's a, a shift of the pelvis one way or the other. So we're kind of taking stock of where our body is right now. So noticing. Go ahead and heel toe those feet closer to each other. Um, maybe go shoulder width. And then let your hips kind of go to one side, sort of sassy teenager. And then hips over to the other side. And just see how that feels. How far can you go to one side? Does one side feel easier today than the other? What does the rest of the leg do when you do that? Does it want to turn out, turn in? Okay, now we're going to test on the ground. So we're going to test a few things and then we'll, we'll move into more of a flow. So come all the way down onto the ground, however you want. Bend those knees, head down on the ground. Place your hands on your pelvis. So your hands are there as your sort of your anchor. I want you to sense that your sacrum is pushing down onto the ground. So the sacrum stays down on the ground and you're not gonna let that sacrum move at all. So the sacrum is nice and steady and still. And then let both knees fall towards the right or move to the right. Really, it's not a fall because you're, you're controlling this by making sure your pelvis stays grounded. So the moment your pelvis starts to peel off the ground, then we're not gonna sense pure hip movement or leg movement. Really, we're, we're playing here with the relationship between the leg bones, the pelvis, and your waist. Um, and so if you let your pelvis lift off the ground, then we're not gonna get a sense of how your legs move. So let, let those legs fall to the left as you maintain your pelvis completely grounded on the ground. So when your knees are straight up and down, that weight is the same on your pelvis. You go, okay, I can feel the weight of, of gravity pushing out onto my sacrum and the weight of my body pushing out onto my sacrum. It stays there as the knees fall to the left. And just notice how far can I go? Internal rotation with that right leg, external rotation with that left leg without compromising that um, center point. And then back to center and then over to the other side. So you'll do it several times here to the right because we did a few to the left. So as you go to the right, knees fall over to the right, but you're making sure, okay, did I maintain that weight on my sacrum, on my pelvis, so that the pelvis isn't moving with the legs, that the legs are doing this pure movement. Notice if your waist is doing anything. So sometimes we'll see a hiking of the hips. So if your knees are falling uh, to the right, sometimes the right side of the waist is gonna start to shorten. Uh, to try and make it seem like you're going deeper or further. So back to center. Again, making sure those hands are on your pelvis. That's going to tell you if you're moving things. So pelvis stays steady as your knees fall to the left. Right? And just how far can you go? And maybe you lift your head for a second and have a look. So you have that visual cue as well. How far am I going? Bring your head back down. Knees over to the other side. Sense, feel, make sure your pelvis is steady, and then lift your head, look, how far am I going? Is it the same right to left? Maybe you keep your head lifted and do right to left a few times so that you can really sense. Is it even? Is one side a little easier today? Is internal rotation easier, external rotation? Are you not sure? Right, and then come back to center. And go ahead and come all the way up. Back up to stand. Okay. Let's touch our calves. So we'll come back to that, those things. We'll retest those much later. But let's go ahead and roll up your mat or grab a towel and roll it up. And place the ball of the foot on the roll. And then stepping a leg forward. So 
So noticing how your calf muscles are feeling today. We're not here for too long. Another two breaths on this side. You can have that back leg straight or bent, so whichever gives you more stretch today. All right, and then we'll switch. So other ball of the foot on the roll, leg comes forward. You can bend that front knee or not. That back leg can be straight or bent or a bit of both. And then coming back to center. Inhale, cow pose, chest forward, tailbone up, stretch out the front of the body. Exhale, round your back and find your cat. Now keep going here, cat cow. find neutral here. So in your neutral here, shoulders down away from the ears, jaws relaxed. Try and keep your spine really stable here. So try not to let anything drop or round. Now you maintain your neutral spine. You're going to slowly slide that right leg back behind you. And you can go ahead and flex the foot, but let the toes touch the earth. So here, Again, nothing's changing in your torso. We're gonna move just the leg bone in relationship to the pelvis, so the pelvis isn't moving either. On your exhale, float your right leg up a couple of inches to wherever you can with a straight leg, and then inhale, back down. Exhale, lift. Inhale, down. So again, you're making sure your entire torso is still. Your pelvis is still. You're just moving that right leg, using your core to stabilize. If you want this to feel harder, you imagine that your leg is really heavy, that it's 100 pounds. And then lifting that leg up and hold. Go ahead and bend your right knee. And then take some big circles with that knee. So you're now allowing your pelvis to move as you move your leg. Elbows stay straight, but not hyperextended. Circle the other way. And then release the knee down. Wag the tail and we'll switch sides. 
So from hands and knees, shoulders down away from the ears, core is engaged, pelvis stays steady as you slide your left leg back behind you. Nothing is moving in the torso or the pelvis, just the leg. Exhale, float your left leg up. So you're using your glutes and hamstrings here. Inhale, back down. Exhale, lifting. Inhale, lowering. Keep going. And again, you can imagine that your leg is really heavy or that you're moving through water, and that will make this harder. Notice if your leg is wanting to turn in or out as you do this. And then pause next time your leg is lifted. Bend the knee. Take some circles with the knee. Getting into the hip, but allowing the pelvis to move with the leg. So allowing yourself to, to find that movement throughout the body, really. Circle the other way. Elbow stays straight. And then release the knee down. Take the toes together, widen those knees, sit yourself back, child's pose. Take a few moments to catch up with your breath. Walk your hands over to the right. Got a nice side body stretch here. Breathing into that left rib cage. back to center, back to hands and knees, and then downward facing dog. So first down dog here, go ahead and pedal out the feet, sway the hips, move in whatever way feels good. Go ahead and find stillness. Notice how your body lands. Inhale, shift forward to a plank. Exhale, lift back up, down dog. Forward and back a few times here. Inhale, finding your plank. Exhale, finding your dog. Keep going. Next time you're in dog, staying there. From dog, inhale your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot forward. Left hand down on the ground, right arm rises, rotate.
down and come on up, high lunge. So all ten toes face forward, back, heel is lifted, arms reach up. From your high lunge, go ahead and grab a hold of your left wrist with your right hand and side bend to the right. back to center and then open up warrior two pivot your left foot down parallel to the short edge of the mat right knee is bent right foot intersects the back arch arms out into a T smooth breaths notice what your pelvis is doing here so you don't have to change anything but you're noticing you're noticing maybe how this right leg bone relates to your pelvis. Let's go ahead and flip your right palm, reverse your warrior, reach your right arm up and back, side stretch, opening up this right side body. Keep that side stretch going to straighten that right leg for a moment. Rebend that right knee, bring your right elbow to your thigh, and reach your left arm over, side angle. that into the feet lift yourself back up go ahead and relax your arms and straighten out your right leg let's shorten our stance for a triangle so heel toe your left leg in just a little bit and take your hands to your pelvis and for your triangle let's really try and and move that pelvis so you're letting your hips shift to the left or towards your back foot to start to create that hinge so first nothing is happening in the torso the torso is staying completely still and what's moving your torso closer to your legs is actually your pelvis uh, relating to your leg. So you're first finding that. And see if you can just pause there in that sort of movement. And it might be really small, so I have a pretty decent mobility in that direction. So for you, it might just be a couple of inches and that's okay. So just start there and see if you can slowly sort of creep into that. You'll start to feel maybe some stretching into that right inner thigh. And then go ahead and allow yourself to find some side bends. So it's fine to, to bend into the side body here as your left arm reaches up to the ceiling, your right hand down on your leg or on a block. Pushing down into the feet, strong legs, lift yourself up. We're moving to pyramid, so you're going to turn to face the front of the mat. You're going to have to readjust your feet a little bit, so you might have to heel to your right foot a little to the left, and just take a small step forward with your left foot to turn those left toes to face forward. So now we're facing the front of our mat. We're going into a pyramid with moving just the pelvis on our thigh bones, so the spine's going to stay exactly the same. You're hinging forward, but again, the, the movement of the torso is because your pelvis is moving on your legs. So go ahead and place those hands on your right thigh. So anywhere on your right thigh, anywhere on or above the knee. And then think about reaching your sits bones, especially that right sit bone, up to the ceiling. 
So trying to prevent it from tucking under. So if I tuck it under, then I'm shortening my hamstrings. And really what we're trying to do here is stretch the hamstrings. So instead of allowing that sit bone right now, or even though my spine is relatively straight, my sit bone is tucked under, or my pelvis is tucked under. I want to reach, so it's pretty subtle, the sit bones up to the ceiling, the tailbone up to the ceiling, so that I get a lot more stretch. So even if it looks really similar, right, I'm tucked under, I'm untucked, they're very different stretches. Once I tuck under, I feel absolutely nothing in my hamstrings, I untuck, and suddenly that whole back of the right leg lights up. All right, go ahead and bend your front knee, plant those hands down, step forward, back foot meets the front, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen halfway up once again. Exhale, fold, plant those hands, step yourself back to a plank. You can go straight to down dog, or if you'd like to flow through vinyasa, go ahead and do that now. Exhale, bending the elbows back, chaturanga or knees, chest and chin. Inhale, in your back bend, cobra or up dog. And then making your way to downward facing dog. From down dog, inhale your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot forward. Right hand stays down on the ground, left arm rises, rotate. Lower your left hand down, finding a high lunge. All ten toes face forward, back heel is lifted, arms come up. Grab your right wrist with your left hand and side bend to the left. Back to center and open up, warrior two. Right foot parallel to the short edge of the mat, left toes face the short edge of the mat, arms out into a T. Start to notice how your body is positioned, especially thinking about how your left leg relates to your pelvis, how your pelvis is relating to your spine, and how your rib cage is relating to the pelvis.
flipping your left palm, reverse your warrior side stretch, left arm reaches up and back. Keeping that side stretch, go ahead and straighten out your front leg for a few moments. And then re-bend your left knee, bring your left elbow to your thigh, right arm overhead, side angle. Strong legs, push down into the feet, lift yourself up. Let's straighten out that front leg. You can relax your arms. Go ahead and shorten your stance for triangle. Bring your hands to your pelvis. And again, we're moving now just the pelvis on the legs. So the torso moves with your pelvis here. And you're shifting your hips to the right. You can have a little bit of rotation as well. So that, that right hip can come a little bit forward as well as bringing both hips over to the right. And just notice how far you go. And again, everyone's different, so it may be only a few inches, and that's okay. And if you're there, that's fine. All right, so we're just trying to get first that pelvis to position before we move the rest of the spine. And sort of inching your way in. How far does my pelvis comfortably go, safely go? And then once you feel like your pelvis isn't going to move any further, then you can let the rest of the spine come along. Left hand down anywhere, leg, block, earth, hovering, right arm to the ceiling. Strong legs, push down into the feet, lift yourself all the way up, returning to face forward towards the front of your mat to find pyramid pose. Small step forward with that right foot. And again, we're hinging at the hips, hands above the knee or on your thigh. And then go ahead and play with your pelvis, sort of on the other side, so sensing what it feels like if your pelvis is tucked under, even though it's very subtle. Tucked under, hamstrings are not going to stretch as much. And then untuck and sense how when you move that attachment point, that sit bone away from the back of the knee, then you get a lot more stretch. All right, go ahead and bend that front knee. Plant those hands, step yourself forward, back, foot meets the front. Inhale, lengthen halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise to stand, arms reach up. And exhale, hands to the heart. All right, now we want our block. 
or your textbook or something to stand on. Just to give you a little bit of height, that way your hips can actually move a lot more. Um, today, I don't want this to be too much of a balance challenge. So if you need a wall, please use a wall. So I'm going to start on my left foot. So taking the block, you'll have your left hand to your wall or to a chair, or if you're feeling really confident with balance today, you don't need to hold on to anything, but can be quite helpful. You're going to stand on your block with your left foot. And just make sure you're the right distance from the wall. You don't want to feel too crammed, but you want to feel supported. Now, if your foot is longer than your block, either you're putting two blocks, one in front of the other, or your toes are going to come off the block. I want the, the heels and the balls of the feet, the heel and the ball of the foot on the block. And then you're going to notice how your pelvis uh, is positioned once you're balancing. You're floating that right foot. That right foot is the same height as the left. If you can, I do want you to have a hand on the hip so that you can feel, or even both hands on the hip. So what I have right now is both hands on the hip. The left elbow is just touching the wall for a little bit of support, um, but you can, you can play around with that. You're gonna let your hip move around, but I want the left hip to be the driver here. So you're going to allow that left hip to move towards the wall or your support or to the left as your right hip drops. And then you're gonna push down into your left foot to bring the hip back up. So that left hip comes in. So that right leg is going to move. It's gonna move down towards the ground. Right leg moves down towards the ground as the left hip moves to the left. And then the left hip pulls in and that right leg is going to float back up. And just go ahead and feel this. And now the reason I want your hands on your pelvis or at least one hand on the pelvis is to sense that you're actually going pure uh, movement here in this in this plane that you're not starting to twist so oftentimes what I see is there's um, not just a, a drop of the hip but there's like a rotation of the entire pelvis as you do this so so just watching that you're really staying in this this front plane Next time your hip is lifted, you'll pause. So you're pushing down into that left foot. That right hip is at the same height. You're noticing where the rest of the body is organized. And maybe you want to balance now. So now you maybe let go of the arms and just sense how you balance on this block, how your body organizes itself. And then go ahead and step off and we'll switch sides. So standing on the block on with the right foot, either right hand to the wall or a chair, or you go hands on the hips and your elbows touching the wall. So whatever's accessible for you. Again, making sure the heel and the ball of the foot are on, the toes can come off. First sensing that kind of neutral position, neutral-ish. Noticing what your knees are doing. Then we're going to do that hip list. So that right hip goes to the right, left hip drops, and then you push down into your right foot to pull that right hip in again. And so again, you're noticing, can I do this without adding any rotation, any other movements that we're really kind of going this sort of tick tock. We're, we're in one plane with the pelvis, with the movement here of our hips and that we're not adding other things. Sometimes there's also an adding of a, of a like um, a tilt of the pelvis or a tuck of the pelvis. Um, so noticing maybe that, is anything happening there? Is any rotation happening? Can you stick to this pure single plane movement? And noticing how far do you go? How mobile is this side compared to the other? And again, this side is not, right now at least, not about balance. It's about sensing what can my hips do. And the next time you're in that lifted position, so you're pushing down into that right foot, you're lifted. Now go ahead and play with your balance. You can let go of those arms. In the sense how your body organizes itself to balance. Great. 
and then go ahead and step off the back and move the block off to the side. And then we're going into a wide legged forward fold. I'm gonna go my butt to you. That way you can actually see a little bit better when I add some movements. Uh, you don't have to do that. So legs go wide, wider than the shoulders, and go ahead and fold forward. Hands can come down to the ground or they can come to a block. I don't want you to have to worry about reaching the earth, so that's where the block can be quite helpful. Let your spine be, you know, semi-long, so you don't need to have um, a super rounded back here, um, but you also don't need to worry if your back is a little rounded. So first, just sensing, okay, here's my uh, position. We'll bend the right knee just a little bit. We're not going into a full side lunge, but bend that right knee. Notice how your hips react to that, and then straighten. And then bend your left knee. Again, notice how your hips react, and straighten. Go back and forth a few times. Okay, and then straight legs. Now, the legs are not going to bend. For a lot of us, we're going to want to bend, but you're not going to bend your knees. You're going to do sort of that hip motion that we were doing in the listing or the hip check that we did right at the beginning where we were sort of uh, letting one hip hike and the other hip uh, drop. So here you're going to let that left hip drop. So we feel a stretch in that left inner thigh, that right hip. If you're looking at the pelvis, that right side of the pelvis is now higher than the left. So if I were to put a marble on the right side of the pelvis, it would slide off and onto the ground. And then switch. So now I'm dropping that right hip down. That right inner thigh is going to stretch. That left hip is now higher. My legs are straight. And so some of us, this is going to be very limited. And so we're just noticing. And go ahead and just go back and forth. And then notice, does the, is there any desire to bend the knee? Notice what kind of reaction the spine wants to make. So once you have the hang of the movement, can you keep your spine still? Right, the torso stays pretty still. Of course, it has to react to the movement of the, the pelvis, but can you really make this movement about that relationship between the pelvis and the legs? All right, even yourself out right to left. Pause in the middle, push down into the feet and come up to stand. You can stay right where you are. I'm gonna turn around so I can face you. So just like at the beginning of class, now with your torso lifted, see how much movement you have here in your hips. The side to side motion. So maybe there's a little more, maybe not. So we're letting, right, the waist is gonna react. That right hip hikes, the right side of the waist is going to shorten. Left hip hikes, left side of the waist is going to shorten. So here you're trying to keep that rib cage in one position as you're moving your hips. Great. All right, come to center. Take those feet back together. Maybe coming kind of middle front of the mat, toes slightly out, heels in, malasana, bending down, yogi squat. And then come all the way down onto your back. We're going to test out that rotation that we did early on. So coming all the way down. Hands on the pelvis. Again, you're sensing where your sacrum is. There's going to be no movement of the sacrum. And then you'll let both knees fall to the left. And you'll just notice, do you have more range now after doing what we did? You know, maybe, maybe not, but noticing. Or is it easier to keep your, your pelvis centered and not let your pelvis move with your legs? Back to center. Let both knees fall to the right. And again, noticing, is it maybe a little easier to move the legs now that we've really stretched them and brought awareness? It was a lot of, you know, bringing intentional awareness to these parts of the body. Back to center, go, go back and forth just a few more times at your own pace here. Again, remembering that the, the sacrum stays down and that you're really sensing what's happening between the legs and the pelvis and that you're not letting the pelvis move with the legs. 
You could also lift your head and have a look, right? Is it any different? Maybe, maybe not. Is one side easier? Maybe, maybe not. And then back to center and relax. Let's take a figure four stretch. Just keeping on this hip theme. Let's cross that right ankle over the left thigh, open up that right knee. You can stay right there if that gives you enough stretch or you can pull your left leg in and grab a hold of your left thigh. You can play with um, your pelvis here as well. So if you tuck your pelvis under and let your low back press down into the ground, you'll notice what happens to the stretch versus if you tilt your pelvis um, and reach your tailbone towards the earth, let your low back lift off the ground, right? Slightly different stretches. Go ahead and release and let's switch sides. So other ankle crosses over the thigh, knee presses open. Again, you can stay with your right foot down, or if you prefer, you can pull those legs in, but go ahead and, and let yourself explore what happens if you tuck or untuck your pelvis and how that affects the stretch. Go ahead and release. I'm going to set up for a bridge or a supported bridge. So ankles are underneath the knees, arms alongside the body. Go ahead and peel your spine up into a bridge. And then it's up to you. Find whatever variation feels good. You can stay where you are. You can interlace the fingers behind the back. You can grab your block and place it any height underneath your sacrum. So it's not at your low back, it's at your pelvis. So whatever feels good here for the next seven or so reps. You're ready, pushing down into the feet, releasing whatever arm variation you have, or removing the block, and then lowering the spine down. Let's pull the right knee into the chest, left leg goes long, finding a twist, right knee crosses over to the left, right arm out into a T or a cactus arm. We're not here for very long, maybe three or four breaths. back to center. Go ahead and switch sides. Left knee hugs in, right leg goes long. And find a twist. Left knee crosses over. Left arm out into a T or cactus arm. And again, about four breaths. And then 
coming to center and finishing up with a happy baby, pulling those knees towards the armpits, grabbing a hold of the feet. You can rock, you can be still, you can play with straightening and bending the legs. Just find whatever feels good. You can take the soles of the feet together. And then making your way to center, pausing at center. Take a deep inhale. Exhale out the mouth. Release your legs, release your arms, and find your final resting pose, your Shavasana. Feel free to use any props that feel nice to support the body. And once you feel comfortable, allow yourself to land. Let yourself be where you are. And then notice where your body naturally lands. So unlike at the beginning where we noticed and then changed how we were standing, here I want you to notice and not change. Just notice and let that be that. Notice how your sacrum lands on the ground, right? Is there more weight on the right or the left? There's no right or wrong answer. There's no correct way. You're just noticing. Noticing where your back body, where your back lands. Is it more on the right, on the left? More middle back, more upper back. Again, there's no right or wrong. There's no changing. It's noticing, right? Awareness is always the first. Notice where your arms land in relationship to your body, how far out. And it's not to look, it's to sense. So feel, where are they? Where is your right arm? Where is your left? Where is your right leg? Where is your left? And finally, where is your head and how does your head land on the earth? And from this position, this perfect position, you're already perfect, just like this. Give yourself permission to relax.